Hello everyone, Victor is here and in this video we are going to focus on resonance practice. I've prepared a few examples, so for each of the examples what I suggest you do, pause the video, then um, copy the example onto your piece of paper, try that, try finding all the resonance structures, determining what is the major minor contributors, and then we are going to go through those together. So the first example that I have over here, the very first thing that I want to do is to make sure that I have all implicit electron pairs that I have on this molecule and I have three electron pairs on the oxygen. This is a type of a resonance where I have the electron pair on the oxygen and that electron pair is going to be right next to a pi bond. So this is what I would classify as an electron pair plus a pi bond resonance. And the first thing that I'm going to do here is I will take the electrons from the oxygen and push them towards my pi bond. In order to accept those electrons, carbon of the pi bond would have to take the electrons and push them onto its neighbor. So that going to give me the next resonance structure that will look like this. I now have a double bond between carbon and oxygen. There is an electron pair on the bottom carbon, which going to have a negative charge and the rest of my molecule is just as is. The next step is now to look at where my excess of electron density is, which is this carbon over here, and then from there I can go towards my next pi bond, so I can take these electrons, push them towards my pi bond, and I'm going to get the next structure that will look like this, so I have double bond over here, double bond over here, and the electron pair is now on the middle carbon. So from this point, I can do that one more time. I will take those electrons, push them towards the pi bond, and I'm going to get the one last structure where I have oxygen, double bond, double bond, and an electron pair on my top carbon like that. If I'm going to do this resonance one more time and push my electrons back onto the oxygen, what I'm going to end up with is a structure that looks like this. I have now the negative charge back on the oxygen and then I have bond, 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 like this. So from the perspective of resonance, this is not a sufficiently different resonance structure from what I have from the very beginning, because I have my negative charge on oxygen originally, then I have it on one carbon, second carbon, third carbon, and then I'm back with my negative charge on the oxygen. And while technically that is a valid resonance structure, I'm not really going to take that into consideration, I'm not going to use that for my analysis, because as I said, that structure is not qualitatively different from the original one. So I'll just put it into a little box over here and just forget about that for right now. Okay, so the next thing in my analysis is going to be to find the major versus minor resonance contributors. And I'll remind you that whenever we are looking for major versus minor contributors, we are first going to check for full octets. And when I'm talking about full octets, I'm specifically referring uh, to the atoms with the charge, in this case with the negative charge. So my oxygen in the first structure, it has a full octet. My carbon in the next one also has a full octet. My next carbon has a full octet. And my last carbon down there also has a full octet. So at that point, all of my atoms that have charge have a full octet, so they are more or less stable, if you want to put it this way, and that means that I need to look at the next level of difference, and in this case I'm going to look at the position of my negative charge, and when it comes to the position of the negative charge, we generally want to make sure that our negative charge is on the more electronegative elements, so we want to have negative charge on the oxygen more than on nitrogen, or on nitrogen more more than on carbon, etc. In this case, I have my negative charge on oxygen versus carbon, carbon, and another carbon, which means that the original structure that I have from the very beginning is going to be my major contributor. For the next structure, I have a positively charged molecule over here. And remember the general rule. We're going to be moving our electrons whenever we are dealing with resonance either towards the positive charge 
or away from the negative charge. So in this case, I have a positively charged oxygen and I will also remind myself that there is an electron pair on the oxygen like that, although I'm not showing it, but that is an implicit electron pair. So what I'm going to do, I will take the electrons from the pi bond and I will move those electrons onto the oxygen. In this case, I am essentially polarizing my pi bond and that will restore two electron pairs on the oxygen and I still have hydrogen on that one. The positive charge is now going to be on the carbon and then the rest of the molecule is going to be just as is. Then the next thing that I can do, I'm seeing that I have a carbocation right next to a pi bond. So that's going to be a case where I have an empty orbital plus a pi bond. So I can take the electrons off my pi bond and move them towards the carbocation. So I'm still moving electron towards the plus. And in this case, I'm going to end up with the resonance structure that looks like this. I still have my OH with electrons. The double bond is now in the middle of the molecule and my plus charge is right over there to the right from where it used to be. At that point we have exhausted all of our reasonable uh, resonance structures so I'm going to move on to my analysis where I'm going to check my structures for full octets and if I don't have full octets or everything has full octet then I'm going to look at the position of my charge. So I have oxygen, carbon and carbon that bear my charges, so those are the atoms that I'm going to check for the octets. Oxygen in the first case has a full octet, carbon in the second case has only six electrons around it, and in the last case, for my last resonance contributor, I also have carbon with six electrons because I will remind you that we do have an implicit hydrogen over here, so overall carbon has six electrons around it. So here I have two open shell species and I have a species with a full octet. Thus, knowing our rules, I can easily say that a species with a full octet is going to be my major contributor. Don't be afraid of positive charges on heteroatoms like oxygen or nitrogen. If you have species with full octet versus you have something without a full octet, full octet is always going to be more important than any kind of a charge that you might have on your molecule. The next molecule, I have a positively charged species again. So I'm not seeing any implicit electron pair that I need to show here because I already have one on the nitrogen so the easy thing for me to do here would be to take the electrons from the nitrogen and move them towards my carbocation. In this case I'm going to end up with a resonance structure that looks like this. I still have nitrogen with the hydrogen but now I have a double bond with the carbon that used to have a carbocation on that and because of that nitrogen will have a positive charge and the rest of my molecule stays unchanged. Another thing, however, in this case that I can do, I can take electrons from the pi bond and move those towards my carbocation. In this case, I'm going to end up with a structure in which nitrogen still has its electron pair and my double bond has now migrated to the right side and the carbocation is on the left side. Remember that when it comes to the resonance structures, not all of them have to follow or flow one into another one in a linear fashion. Sometimes you are going to start with a molecule where the um, resonance structure is going to essentially branch into one direction then into another direction. So don't think that they all have to seamlessly flow one from the other one. Now, in this case, if I am looking for the major contributors, I again will start by looking at the atoms with the positive charge. So it's this one, this one, and that one, and checking for full octets. In the first case, my carbon is a six electron species because I have an implicit hydrogen here that's hiding from us. In the case on the bottom, I again has implicit uh, hydrogen, so that is a six electron species. And finally, my nitrogen on the right, that has a full octet. Nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, in it, so it's a complete shell. Which means that my last structure, or my middle structure, I guess, because I did that first, uh, is going to be my major contributor.
For the next one, I have a negatively charged species again. So I will remind myself that the negative charge on a carbon means that we have an electron pair on this carbon. And like in the previous case, I can potentially branch my resonance in a couple of different directions. One direction is if I push my electron pair towards the carbon on the left, which will have to push now electrons onto the nitrogen, nitrogen has one electron pair to begin with, so when I draw this resonance structure, I'm going to end up with nitrogen, which now has two electron pairs, double bond to a carbon, which now, in turn, also double bonded to the carbon where the negative charge used to be, and then the rest of my molecule is sitting there unchanged, like that. Because nitrogen has an extra electron pair, nitrogen now is going to be negatively charged. Another thing that I can do in this case, I can push my electrons towards the oxygen. Well, in this case, what I'm going to have is the left side of my molecule is going to stay unchanged, so I'm going to draw it like that. I'm going to have a double bond between carbon and the carbon of the CO double bond. I will have the oxygen. Oxygen naturally had two electron pairs on it to begin with, and we have just added another electron pair on it via the resonance. And then I will have the rest of my molecule unchanged like that, and because we've added extra electron density onto the oxygen, the oxygen is now going to have a negative charge. That's about it for meaningful resonance structures here, and the question is going to be which one is my major contributor. So by doing the analysis of everything with a negative charge, I'm going to see that the first structure has... Look at that, a full octet, because my carbon with a negative charge has two electrons on one bond, two electrons on the other bond, two electrons for the negative charge, and we also have the implicit hydrogen over here. My nitrogen on the bottom, well, that one has a full octet as well. And my oxygen also has a full octet on that as well, which means that now I need to look where exactly my charge is located. On the first structure, my charge is on the carbon, on the bottom it's on the nitrogen, and to the right, that charge is on the oxygen. From the electronegativity perspective, we know that carbon has a lower electronegativity than nitrogen, which has, in turn, lower electronegativity from the oxygen. If we look at the position of those elements in the periodic table, they are arranged like that in our periodic table, so uh, the further to the right we go, the higher the electronegativity is going to be. If we check the exact values, oxygen is roughly 3.5, nitrogen is about 3.0, and carbon is about 2.5. So, out of all of these elements, oxygen will be able to stabilize the negative charge the best, which means that my structure to the right is my major contributor. The next molecule that I have here is a little bit tricky. The thing is, I do not have any charges here, so where do I start? Which bond do I polarize? In which direction? Well, the trick here is to remember that oxygen is significantly more electronegative than carbon, which means that oxygen is going to pull electron density towards itself, so it is going to be a natural progression of the electron density to get polarized towards the oxygen. So if I do so, I'm going to have two electron pairs on the oxygen to begin with, and once I push my pi bond towards the oxygen as well, I'm going to end up with oxygen that currently has three electron pairs and a negative charge, then I have a carbon with a positive charge, and we have a double bond nearby. Then another resonance structure that we can show here is by moving our double bond, then in this case we are going to end up with double bond next to my oxygen, and I will show all electron pairs around that as well. My plus charge is going to be on the right side like that, and when it comes to the major versus minor contributors, generally speaking, you want to avoid making additional charges whenever possible. So my original molecule 
uh, original resonance contributor over here did not have any extra charges. We had to create charges in order to draw resonance, which means that the original structure, the first resonance contributor, is in fact my major contributor. In the next structure, I have the positive charge again. So that is again going to be a situation where I have the empty orbital, empty orbital, plus a pi bond. So in order to draw the resonance here, I'm going to take my pi electrons and push them towards my carbocation. So what I'm going to get here is a structure like this, where I have double bond up and plus is down in my molecule. Now notice, just because I have a pi bond over here on the oxygen does not necessarily mean that I'm going to be using it for the resonance. In this particular case, if I wanted to use the oxygen and the pi bond between the oxygen and carbon, I would have to end up with the molecule where I create extra charges. And as I've mentioned a moment ago, we always want to avoid creating extra charges unless absolutely necessary. So in this case, that CO double bond is not really going to be doing anything for our resonance. Now, when it comes to the major versus minor contributor in this case, we are going to look at the position of our charges and first thing first, we are going to check for full octets. So I have charge here and I have charge here. In the first case, I have an implicit hydrogen uh, next to my plus charge, so that is an open shell six electron species. In the second case, I also have an implicit hydrogen, so that is also going to be a six electron species. On top of that, these are both secondary carbocations without any other effects around them, which means that in this particular case, both of these um, contributors are roughly equal. And also as a reminder, I'm going to say that the tertiary contributor is better than a secondary contributor, which is better than a primary contributor. But in this case, both of them are the same uh, in terms of their substitution pattern, which means that we don't really have any significant difference. Here, I have another positively charged species. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I will start by taking the pi electrons and pushing them towards my carbocation. What I'm going to get in this case is going to be the structure with oxygen up top and I will have carbocation right next to it and the double bond on the side like that. The next thing, very important thing to keep in mind is that in bond line structures we sometimes keep our implicit electrons and in this case that is very relevant because oxygen does have those electron pairs which can participate in resonance. So here, what I'm going to do, I will use those electrons and that will generate a double bond between oxygen and carbon. Now my oxygen only has one electron pair left and a formal positive charge. That's about it for the meaningful resonance structures for this example. So I'm going to continue with my analysis in terms of what is major, what is minor contributor. I have the carbon, I have another carbon, and I have an oxygen with a positive charge. In the first case, I have one implicit hydrogen and second implicit hydrogen. So that carbocation is a six electron open shell species. In the second case, I have one implicit hydrogen over here, which means that that carbocation is also a six electron open shell species. For the oxygen, however, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it, so that has full octets, which makes it into the major contributor. And for the last structure here, I have this funky looking molecule with a nitrogen in the middle. So what I can do is push my electron pair towards one of the pi bonds that going to generate me a molecule in which nitrogen now has a double bond and I have an electron pair on the carbon. Since nitrogen has donated the electron density, nitrogen is going to be positively charged. Alternatively, I can push my electrons in the opposite direction. So there, what I'm going to end up with is a carbon with a negative charge on the left, then nitrogen 
with a double bond to the left from it and the rest of the molecule unchanged and again since the nitrogen has donated its electron density uh, to make that double bond to make a pi bond we are going to have a plus charge on the nitrogen like that here again i have used uh, the electron pairs uh, and i have turned a completely neutral molecule into a charged molecule so i have created extra unnecessary charges which means that my original structure is going to be my major contributor. Did you like these examples? How did you do? Let me know in the comments below if you missed any of the resonance contributors or you mislabeled any of your major contributors. Hit the like button if you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.